All of a sudden, I find myself living in a city. I'm 25. I have all of these stories to tell. And my whole life, I've been listening to stories and, and writing stories in my journals, but it's almost like I, I just, I was like 25 years pregnant or something with stories. And I wanted to go and find a place that was nurturing, supportive, but also um, rigorous because this wasn't something that I was only doing because I liked it. I actually wanted to share my work with the world. What's great about Grub is that we're all helping each other to become published writers, to become active members of the community. They, uh, they help you realize that yes, your story matters and you don't have to write like the person sitting next to you for it to have its place on the bookshelf. And I really like that. Many years ago, Khalil Gibran said, Boston is full of fear. It's a cold and solitary place. And what we're trying to do at Grub Street is change that, one writer, one reader at a time, so that we can actually create a warmer, more exciting, more relevant, more welcoming place for writers and for readers, for everybody, really. What's great about Grub is that we're all helping each other to become published writers, to become active members of the community, and I found that when I, when I started taking classes, people remembered me, they would say hi later, and then ask about specific stories, and I just couldn't believe that. So, you know, when, we look, when I look back and I think about Jen's experience at Grub, she's the, the perfect example of why this crazy experiment has worked so well. Um, because she came in as a young writer and found her voice here, and then she also, and, and made all these connections, and had writers, we always talk about writers helping writers here, and she got a lot of help and support from writers who were sort of just beyond where she was professionally. How do you convince yourself that this is a story worth telling? She's working something else. <laughs> <laughs> just put it aside, and, yeah. yeah. We teach people that good writing is about empathy and about imagining people who are not you in various situations. And we think that by teaching people that way, it makes them not only better writers, but more empathetic people in general. I just think that the generosity of spirit that writers have at Grub is amazing. Because again, you don't find that elsewhere. Um, there are other writing conferences, uh, programs, institutes, and Sometimes people, uh, it's almost like there are limited slots on the bookshelf and, you know, if yours is on there, then mine won't be. But that's not the case at Grub Street. They'll build more bookshelves if they have to. I want you to think really hard about the person on the list that you could write a portrait poem about in a way that metaphors would bring this person to life on the page. So if it should be kind of insulting, <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't have to be a, an ode, right? It can be a, it's a portrait poem, and people are complex, so not everything. In the fall of two thousand seven, I started teaching in the Saturday program, noon to four. Teens from all over the city and the suburbs actually would take the train or get dropped off and take classes in fiction, poetry, and nonfiction. Coming to Grub Street as an instructor was wonderful because I would see students but also be able to connect with teens and that's sort of at the heart of why I want to be a writer anyway is to, to write and share stories with the larger community that includes teenagers. There's something, there's something different about writing for yourself rather than writing for a grade, writing for, writing for your school and it makes a big difference and also the other difference is the environment, the kids that surround you. Everyone here wants to be here. They're, they're not here for some credit uh, to graduate or because they needed something to fill their slot on their schedule. They're, they're here because they love to write and they want to be here. When you have that energy around you, it's really inspiring and it lifts you up and I produce better poetry. The other reason that I think Jen is a really perfect example of Grub Street working is, you know, part of what we want to do is we want to pay teachers so that they can, that will feed their muse and help them pay their rent so that they can keep doing their work. And I think for Jen, the teaching opportunities at Grub Street have allowed her to, you know, they, they literally helped her survive through her MFA program. 
Yeah, well, I think I remember one time um, someone saying that the best thing you can do for your writing is to j know where your next paycheck is coming from. She's writing exciting first. Exciting. <laughs> I, I love writing uh -huh. Okay, yeah, it signifies the beginning of the weekend, the end of the week. Okay, so you get it. So I wrote, before. actually, some of my best pieces with Jen, and I wrote my first spoken word piece with Jen right here and performed it right in there. And people absolutely loved it. And Jen has honestly made me a better writer. The goal of the Memoir Project is to visit every single Boston neighborhood and teach seniors and help them write their stories. And so far, we've actually visited 10 of the 21 neighborhoods. We've gone to JP. East Boston and Chinatown, which are actually three neighborhoods where we've led bilingual classes. What was so great is that I was able to share texts and memoirs like Francisco Jimenez, The Circuit, and we would read and talk and discuss and I would listen to these stories from amazing seniors in the area and um, one in particular, Steve Quintana, he uh, shared his experience being a santero, a healer. We, we're so glad, you know, to be met in the same room. Uh, uh, those who I knew very well, it, it had a lot to talk about. But uh, those that I didn't know about, I was glad to hear their story. Uh, uh, we become friendly by knowing that we had a story to tell and uh, that we had a, a, a coach who is giving us uh, a chance to be able to tell it. So far we've published two anthologies and we're coming out with our third one at the end of this year. And the Chinatown program is one that was really exciting to see in the anthology because we have the stories of the senior in the original Cantonese and then translated it into English. And I think it's just, it's exciting to see those stories that otherwise we may not see. And I think it was really wonderful for the seniors to be able to see those stories in their original language and then translated. So I'm in the room at the Museum of the Marketplace, where the Manuscript Mart, and two dozen people are having meetings simultaneously in 15 minute intervals with agents and editors from New York, from Boston. This is real. This is not extracurricular. This is potentially my life. This is something I could do. This is right now. I think that the Muse actually enacts the Where Boston Gets Writing motto. To have Grace Paley addressing the Grub Street audience was an amazing experience. To have Jonathan Franzen addressing the Grub Street audience was an amazing experience. What's been even more amazing has been seeing the aspiring and emerging writers who have, who, when they came to the Muse a few years ago, maybe they weren't a big name. Now they've gone on to win MacArthur's. They've gone on to be on to win the Pulitzer Prize and um, won major international awards and they started to build, an, well, they were in the process of building an art and audience when they came to Grub Street. I took a great class at Grub Street called Finding Your Book and it was a six week course where people gathered to share their book ideas. One year after taking that course I was literally in New York City sitting in Manhattan, Feminist Press, with two editors talking about the book and the contract and how everything was going to come into play, which writers we were seeking out. And it's been so wonderful to write Ana Castillo, Lorraine Lopez, Ruth Bahar, and to say, this is a project that is real, it's happening, and we would love to have your essay included. And, and they're sending me their essays. I can't believe that four years ago I came into this space at, for an open house party and now, 2010, four years later, I'm a full-time writer, I'm finishing up my MFA degree, I can support myself as, a, as an instructor of creative writing, and I have a book coming out. It, it feels very bizarre, I can't believe it. It's, it's, it's very beautifully symbolic of what we hoped would happen when we opened our doors. If Grub Street did not exist, I would probably be writing, but I certainly wouldn't be a writer. And 
Grub Street has been, uh, continues to be integral in that, in shaping my identity as a writer, as a teacher, and in terms of the future, I'm really excited right now because I have a novel manuscript and I'm continuing to revise it, but it's, it's something where I feel like it can go here, it will be in this pile, and just to be able to have my family here. I told my mom the average novel might be 300 pages, and she asked, what page are you on? And it was like, oh my god, it's just not that, it's not that easy, it's not that simple, and you write them probably hundreds of pages that don't make it into the book. What's, what will be so great is to be able to have this book and have it be something that they can hold in their hands. And, I'm just, I'm really excited about that and I'm sending out work and um, having some luck publishing stories and poems and nonfiction pieces and it's just definitely something that um, I, I can say 200% would not be the case had Grub Street not existed. So that's, that's the truth.